Hey there. Welcome back to the second leg of our Kerbin adventure. So today we're going to look at a few more of our waypoints that we imported last time. A few more of the uh, interesting places here on Kerbin to see. But uh, first things first, I want to show you... We're going to make a uh, slight change to the aircraft that we were using. Uh, so I built this one here offline to save a bit of time. You can see right away the basic airframe is the same. However, we, uh, we got rid of the four underwing Juno engines that we were using initially and we replaced it with a single Weasley turbofan. And um, I kept a couple of these as kind of pontoons underwing to attach the landing gear and, uh, and provide a basis for these uh, small intakes here. And you'll also notice that I switched in uh, an engine nacelle. It's a little bit, uh, a little bit cheaty because it gives you some air intake uh, without actually having a an exposed uh, face to the airflow like these uh, like these small intakes. And it also has 150 uh, fuel. So uh, all in all, this particular setup is just a little bit lighter and uh, a little bit uh, more powerful. The, the Weasley has, uh, let's just have a look at the engines here. So the Weasley has 120, the four Junos would have been 80. So, you know, 50% increase in thrust, uh, a little better ISP, a little better fuel efficiency on a lighter aircraft. So once you've unlocked the Weasley, it is a nice option. So let's, uh, let's get started with this craft. Let's uh, turn on the brakes here while we have a look at our waypoints. So we already went to Crater Island and the Desert Temple last time. One of the ones we should probably look at here right away, uh, just because it's so close and I'm sure every one of you guys already know about this, but let's activate it. It's the old airfield right on the island there. so just off the coast here beyond it kind of looks like it's pointing to the to the VAB but that's that's just the island uh, off off behind it so there you go and we'll do a quick flyby there I'm sure you guys have seen that a hundred times and then um, we'll probably turn north and pick up um, the polar crash site and the highest peak so let's just have a quick look in map mode here make sure that makes sense so yeah, so there's the uh, there's the old island airfield, and then if we go straight north, across the pole, we can pick up the polar crash site, as well as the uh, the highest mountain on Kerbin. So we'll have a look at at least those three sites, see what our fuel looks like, and uh, and then we'll decide what else to do from there. So why don't we give this a whirl? Throttle up. SAS on, and away we go. And the Weasley takes us uh, off the ground very quickly before we have a chance to uh, overstress those, those little wheels that we have here. Just going to uh, actually, I'm going to back the throttle down a little bit, and we're just going to do a quick flyby of the island airfield, and then, as we said, we'll uh, we'll go north. So as we did last time, we can easily set some altitude targets, maybe a speed target. around on a little sharper angle here and then we'll cut back to the east as we do our flyby here we go probably a little higher could have did a little closer flyby but there you have it there's the old airfield 
one of the first things you do when you start flying planes from the KSC is you uh, is you're tempted to try to land on that airfield. It's a little trickier, uh, a little trickier than it looks for for beginners, uh, especially with uh, fragile wheels. But once you have unlocked uh, a bunch of parts and you can build yourself some uh, some pretty durable aircraft, then uh, then you'll find landing on the airfield is pretty easy. Even though it's a uh, kind of a messy looking dirt runway, it is uh, certainly much flatter than the starting runway at the KSC, and you'll be able to set down there pretty easy once you've uh, once you've had a couple practice runs. All right, so let's go let's go north let's set up the polar crash site as our target bring the pilot assistant interface back up you can see here our heading is 353 so let's set that altitude is uh, way high And that's probably a decent configuration initially to do our run up to the pole here. That will take a bit of time. Obviously, as you saw, it's uh, almost a thousand kilometers away. So uh, I'll do some uh, post editing here to, to shorten that trip so you don't have to sit through that whole trip. And, uh, and then we'll have a look at what we can find at the polar crash site. Now as you guys can imagine uh, flying uh, a journey of this distance we are going to be passing over several different uh, biomes some of which we've uh, We've already touched on like the highlands, but we'll be passing over mountains and grasslands and all kinds of biomes. Uh, however, we don't have any science equipment on board and we obviously can't EVA while we're in atmospheric flight. So really all we can do is a crew report, but without the science alert mod updated yet for 1.1.2, uh, which is the version we're flying, uh, the version of KSP we're flying in today. Uh, it's going to be probably not worth the effort to be constantly spamming the uh, cockpit to see if those uh, if those crew reports are available over the various biomes. So we'll catch up on that science uh, later. Uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully the great little mod science alert will be uh, will be updated and available to us shortly. So as we approach this mountain range here, we're going to have to watch our altitude. Uh, we may actually have to bump it up a little bit to clear these uh, to clear these mountain peaks. And an interesting little crater here in amongst the mountains wasn't actually an item that I selected as a point of interest, but uh, interesting little topographical feature nonetheless. Alright guys, we are now inside of 200 kilometers to our destination. You can see our waypoint indicator starting uh, very closely. It's going to be coming over the horizon here. And of course you can see now the, uh, the polar ice cap also coming into view from 5,000 meters up. So let's uh, just make sure we need to make an adjustment to our heading. So we're at 340 this is dropping but let's just uh, get it lined back up here and I think we can also drop our speed 
down to, let's say, 150, and our altitude down a fair bit here as well. So as you can see in map mode, we're now uh, right along the edge of, of the polar cap. Obviously some frozen water here and frozen landmass around the edge. And our crash site is, uh, is right, on the, uh, right on the edge where those, two, where those two ice masses meet. So I'm not sure which side of the hill it's on, if it's on this side or the other side, but that little dot right there might actually be it. Let's, uh, let's swing around and have a look. I think that's it, actually. try to give it one more pass. Sun glaring down on us. There she is. see where our next waypoint is going to be. It's the highest curb and peak. Let's set that. Right over here. Highest peak on Kerbin, the highest mountain on Kerbin. So it's not uh, not too much of a journey. Uh, a little less than 400 kilometers, and we have plenty of fuel left to get there. We'll make a decision on whether we try to set down or head back to the KSC at that point. Probably though, uh, just guessing here, I'd say we're probably going to have to set down because once we're over here, we have a long way to get home. Uh, it's obviously going to be quite a bit further than the thousand kilometers that took us to get to the polar crash site. And uh, we didn't start with a full fuel because this back tank, we only started with 200 or 400. Uh, but as you can see, we've burned through more than half of, of the fuel we started with already. So yeah, we're definitely not going to make it back to the to the KSC. So we will uh, will only be able to consider this a successful flight if we can put Jebediah down somewhere safely and then uh, and do a recovery. probably notice as we come over the pole here the heading is changing relatively rapidly now the uh, pilot assistant heading is adjusting uh, to keep us on target which is good 
Um, I believe this is caused by, and uh, by all means, guys, uh, correct me in the uh, in the comments section below here. But I believe this is caused by the spin of of Kerbin uh, as we come over over the pole here. But uh, not a hundred percent sure on that. So, like I said, if you guys know. If you guys know the reason for this as we come over the pole, why this heading is is spinning so rapidly, then uh, then let me know in the comments below. Unfortunately, guys, as we head back off of the polar region and uh, towards our mountains, we have the sun setting in behind us, uh, Kerbal setting in behind us, so it looks like we're going to do our highest peak flyby at nighttime. Uh, not ideal, however. We're here now, so I don't want to risk uh, trying to land here, waiting for morning, and then doing another takeoff. So, uh, so we're just gonna hope that we have a nice enough view here at nighttime to show you the, the highest peak on Kerbin. Now it's my understanding this highest point on Gerben is approximately 6,700 meters. So I've raised our uh, our flight altitude to 7,000 to uh, hopefully make sure we we skim over it and don't hit anything. So uh, we'll keep an eye on that as we go. go. We just passed over the highest point on Kerbin. Almost had a catastrophic moment there as we uh, try to do some maneuvers at four times time acceleration. point that we flew over and it was uh, we can attest to the fact it was very close to 7,000 meters because we didn't clear that uh, didn't clear that peak by much this looks a little bit bumpy uh, probably looks even worse in the daytime so since it's nighttime we won't have a chance to chicken out there. Got some more air. Let's see if we can touch down 
gently, gently, gently. feathery landing. I gotta watch these wheels. And we lost our front wheel. However, as you can see, we have brought the craft to a stop. Jeb is not dead. We have a beautiful moonrise coming over the peak that we just that we just looked at. That's a beautiful sight. Look at that. That's a lovely picture. So I would say Jeb just has to wait here patiently for a rescue mission to recover him and take him back to the KSC. And then we'll do our third flight to pick up the last of our waypoints. But we'll do that in our next episode. So until then, guys, we'll see you in the next episode. Take care.